Time for breakfast. I'll get yourself. Fine brother you are. Mara Jan used to be my girl. Remember that? Used to be, ain't now, Jeff. Too bad you don't know women like you know that Bible. <laughs> All right, now you listen. This place is half mine. If you want to bring Mara Jane in here, you buy me out. It's a good idea. I'll give you 200 cash and a note for 1,200. You go to give me half of it in cash. You got it. You must have sold that crop by now. Yes, and I owe most of it to Emil Dunker for doing the work that you should have done. All right. All right, brother Frank. And I guess you and me and Mara Jane are going to live here like one big happy family, huh? She might kind of like that. Shut up! <laughs> Frank! You hit me, will you? Shit. that morning when Emil Dunker tore into town. A 
What's the matter with you, Dunker? It's Frank Whalen. What happened? Somebody took a knife to him. Where was he? On the kitchen floor. In his ranch. When I came for work. Well, what did you move him for? I... I wanted to get him to a doctor. What is it, Smitty? Marjane, you'd, you'd better go on back to the cafe. What's the matter, Emil? It's Frank. Let me go. Let me go. Marjane, there's nothing you can do for him. No. Take her home, will you? Get Doc Henderson for her. <laughs> Smitty, you and Romack get over to the farm. Take a look. Let's go, George. yesterday afternoon late. We've got to find that knife, George. Where's Frank? Well, it's bad news, Jeff. Somebody took a knife to him this morning. You hear it bad? He's dead. Emil Dunker found him. Brought him to town this morning. You just off the trail, Jeff? Yeah, I've been riding all night. Where's Dunker now? In town, jail. That doesn't mean he had anything to do with it. Is that right? Now, hold on, Jeff. I know how you... You hold it. on. I've been pounding leather day and night for two full days trying to get to my brother's wedding. But now it turns out to be his funeral. That gives you no cause against Dunker. Well, Smith, for your information, Frank's been having trouble with him. I mean, a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? Money troubles. That box right there tells me all I want to know. Boy's gonna make trouble. Chief can handle him. That horse of his could sure use some tending. Well, he's been on the trail for two days and nights. Guess he ought to be a little dirty, huh? So should the rider. His clothes are clean. George, I'll finish up here. You go over to the Dunker place. Have a look around. Bring your daughter Elsa into town. I'll meet you there. Chief and I questioned Dunker. 
his strongest defense was that he had no blood on his clothes. Mr. Dagger, are you sure you didn't go and change clothes before you brought Frank's body into town? No, I didn't. Can you prove it? No. No, I can't. What about your daughter, Ilsa? Can she tell us? Every morning, Ilsa gets up early to get my breakfast. But yesterday, she didn't feel well, so... I let her sleep this morning. She doesn't know when I left for work. When I came back home... Well, it's a plant-faced Dutchman. Come on in, Maura Jane. Let's have a talk with Frank's killer. Please, Jeff, don't do anything. All right, I won't. Not if he spills his guts clean. But if he don't, I'm going to kill him. You don't do anything, Jeff. Only get out of here. You should better lock Mr. Dunker in a cell for safekeeping. Is that what you paid for, Smith? Huh? Did you protect murderers? I'm sorry, Smithy. I didn't want any trouble, but he's been trying to come here ever since he got All right, don't apologize to him, Marjorie. Before you leave. Why, Jane, what about this trouble that Frank was having with Emil? Frank never had any trouble with Emil. At least not that I ever heard of. Frank didn't go around talking about people. He only told me because, well, because the farmers have mine. You said he had trouble over money. You didn't say anything about the farm. That's right, the same thing. Money's half mine. And speaking of money, Smith, when do I get what Dunker stole from Frank? How did you know there was any money stolen? Because I just checked with the bank. Frank sold his crop, cashed his check. For $1,000. That's right. But there's no proof Dunker stole it. You get out of here. George had brought in not only Ilsa Dunker, but a blood-stained knife and a roll of banknotes he'd found hidden there. But there was even more evidence against the girl. Blood on this knife is Frank Whalen's. All right. You say somebody might have broken into the cabin while you were outside doing the washing and stolen it. Have you any idea where some more of this very same blood might be found? Chief, please. Yosa, what the chief means is this blood on your sleeve. How did it get there? I don't know. Don't let it. It was to Cass. To Cass? It, it was to... This morning, when I, I was doing the washing outside, I heard one of the Osborne cows. It was bellowing, and I, I thought at first, maybe it, it was stuck in the swamp. So I run down there, and, and uh, to where our place joins the Osborne Ranch, and when the, I find the cow just standing there over the calf. Someone had killed it. Just where was this, Ilsa? Near the little clump of brush, oh, about a um, oh, hundred yards east of our cabin. Thank you very much. And, uh, Ilsa, if you'll come back this afternoon, I'll arrange for you to see your father. Thank you. All right, Smitty. The Dungers are nice people. But keep in mind the fact that this is their knife. It was found on their property. So is this money that was stolen from Frank Whalen. I know that. But I keep wondering. Why didn't Dunker just wash the bloodstains off that knife and hang it back on that nail where it belongs? Instead of hiding it where anyone could find it. Bloodstains and all. Not unless you're the chief of police, Smith. The bank advised me to fill out a claim for the money Dunker stole. Stick around. Make sure that's all he does is fill out a claim. That horse still bothers me. You mean like you were saying at Wayland? Yeah. 
Dirty horse, clean rider. Well, Jeff probably just changed clothes out on the trail to look decent when he got home. Well, if he did, the dirty ones ought to be in his saddlebags. Yeah. And they're empty. Keep an eye on him, George. with a knife, but I needed more than that to go on, so I rode to the Dunkard cabin for a look around. George had described it, and I found nothing that would help. Until I needed a hand towel. It reminded me of something. That morning, the hand towel over Whalen's wash basin had been missing. How'd you feel today? I'm not, I'm not sick anymore. No. Huh? How are you, Papa? It's good. It's, it's real good. Mr. Smith, Papa did not kill Mr. Whalen. Why are you keeping him in jail? Well, mainly because we have no way of proving he didn't go home and change his clothes before he brought Frank Whalen in. Oh. Why should that be important? Well, it is. Believe me. I, I do not understand. But if that is the case, I can prove it. You can? Of course I can. Uh, this morning, I fixed Papa's breakfast as usual. And at about um, 4.30, I saw him you go... Yes, sir. I saw him go off to work, and, and he did not come back to change his clothes or for any other reason. Uh, I can swear to that. I've told Mr. Smith already you were asleep this morning. Mr. Dunker, do you ever quarrel with Frank Whalen about money? Oh, oh, never. Did you owe him any money? No. It was just the other way around. Mr. Whalen owed Papa for, for nearly a year's work. That is true. He wanted to settle with me today. So why should Papa steal money he was going to get anyway? That's a good question. Elsa, I'd appreciate it if you'd arrange to stay in town for a few days. Can you do that? Yes. Before you and Frank became engaged, you used to go around with his brother Jeff, didn't you? Well, yes, but I was never really serious about him. Was he serious about you? Well, I... I think so, yes. How did he react when you ditched him for Frank? Did he make any threats or anything like that? I wouldn't have paid any attention to him if he had. Jeff was always spoiled and selfish and given to quick anger. Not at all like Frank. Did Jeff say anything when he brought you home today? Nothing important. He asked me if I'd ride out to the farm with him tonight. Did he say why? He wanted to know if there were any things of Frank's I might want to have. Of course, I'm not going. Why not? Well, Frank and I weren't married. And his things don't belong to me. Well, I'm sure he would have wanted you to have some of them. There's a couple of hairs on it. I deal with the cattle hairs. Us human hairs are a lot thinner. 
Uh, what about that money found at Dunkers? You'll say that wasn't stolen from Frank Whalen's house? No, not. But Frank drew $1,000 out of the bank, and only $810 was found at Dunkers. And what happened to the rest of it? Jeff Whalen's been standing quite a few rounds of drinks down at the Palace Bar. Well, he's been away working, earning money. Well, uh, I wired the railroad gang boss where he's been working. It seems Jeff got in a poker game the night before he left. Got cleaned out. Lost every cent he had coming in wages. was killed with his own bread knife. They got Dunker's knife. I mean, there's blood on it, isn't there? Oh, that was used to kill a calf over at Osborne. Smith said that? I don't get it. I mean, why did he, uh, why did he think Dunker killed a calf? Oh, some plan to account for the blood he must have got in his clothes when he killed Frank. Is that all he said? No. What else did he say? He said they might have to let Dunker go. They're gonna let him go? Unless they can find the other knife on his plate somewhere. Said he thinks he might have buried it with a blood-stained towel. They're gonna look out there tomorrow with a bunch of men. Well, Smitty... Smitty may be right at that. I, I know a place Dunker might have put it. Uh, I'm going over there right now. I'll go with you. No, no, let's, uh, you, you wait here, mine. You just stay here, I'll... Without her help, I would never have been able to trap Jeff Whalen. I left her with her grief and the age-old story of Cain and Abel. <laughs> 